I received an email from my mom titled, Help. I was at work and caught completely off guard. However, when I see my mom's name next to the email subject, Help, my heart sunk. My mom is my support, my strength. And I hate to hear she needs help from anyone, including myself. I immediately start thinking about all the sacrifices she made to build a better life for my dad, brother, and I. I started thinking about how she would take me to get a strawberry milkshake after every dentist appointment, because to her, I did so well. Even though we both know I didn't, and it was pretty much a fist fight between the dentist and I the entire time. But she saw the best in me. She always saw the best in me. Now as an adult, I know that we struggled. As a kid, I could not tell because she never let me struggle, even if she did. My mom has never asked me for help. She's never asked anyone for help. Every day, there was food on the table. Every Christmas, Santa ate the cookies, drank the milk, and gave me the best presents. Mama Huffman is the strongest woman that I know. She could turn $10 into Christmas and $5 into the most amazing Thanksgiving meal that you've ever had. She protected me. She protected me from when the monsters went from underneath my bed to now inside my head. So if my mom ever needs help, I'm there. I start reading this email. I'm focused on every letter. I'm laser focused on this message. The email told a story about how her and my dad were going through some financial hardships, and they needed some money just to get to the end of the month. So I replied, how much do you need? I get a reply back fairly quick, $500. This is a large chunk of money, so I figured I'd wait until I got home and call her on the phone just so I can see what's going on. I was teaching at the time, so I went to class with the email heavy on my mind. The message kept replaying over and over again, and I know my mom's voice very well, so reading the email just hurt. About an hour later, I get another email, and they are asking, when could I send the money? And this started to raise some red flags because my mom is anything but forceful. Especially in a situation like this, she would never be forceful when she's asking her own son for money. So the tone that sounded so familiar now started to sound wrong. I couldn't help but think, what's going on with my family? I'm sitting here just troubled in class. So I started to think. Some red flags had been raised. Because, one, Mama Huffman is anything but that forceful person that was represented. And two, Mama Huffman doesn't really email much. I mean, she can email, but it's not her first choice of communication. Let me tell you all something real quick. Mama Huffman is a Southern raised Christian woman that loves three things. She loves Jesus, she loves her family, and she loves to cook for people. She loves to cook for people. You've never eaten enough if you go over to her house. So I call her at the first chance that I get. And I'm greeted with that loving, calm, cheerful mom voice. It's nothing like mama's voice. So I ask her, did you send me an email? And she replies, Eric Jamel, you know I don't do the email. <laughs> and yes, she said the email because she doesn't really understand the technology. <laughs> but also, she used my middle name. So I know she is dead serious at this moment in time and no games shall be played. If your mom's from the South, you know exactly what I'm talking about right now. 
I couldn't help but think that I've been a cybersecurity professional for years at that point. I had two degrees, multiple certifications, and countless hours of training. I've even personally held these trainings. But this was different. I wondered, how could a criminal psychologically compromise me to the point where I almost made a huge mistake? And I like to think of myself as one of the good cybersecurity professionals. I blocked a lot of cyber attacks in my day. A few months later, the school I was working at received an email from an Amazon account with an Amazon invoice attached to it. A friend of mine, Susan, is the one who downloaded the attachment. Susan is an online shopaholic. She loves the convenience of online shopping. A quote she liked to tell me is, I hate to go out and wait in line. If I can get everything I need while being in my pajamas, I'm about that life. And what a time to be alive. That's who Susan is. So when she received the email, she thought it was something her husband, her kids, or herself had purchased. She analyzed the email. It read well, looked legit, even had the correct Amazon logo. However, when she downloaded the attachment, her computer began to slow down. So she went to another computer and that computer began to slow down. And she went to a third computer, and that computer began to slow down. Let me preface this real quick. We are an institution of higher education, which we means we have slower internet, and we are not using the best computer. So a slow computer does not raise any red flags to her or anyone else in the building. <laughs> Actually, if a computer began to speed up and began to work efficiently, that would be more concerning than a slow computer. <laughs> However, I digress. So she starts going to her office, and by the time she gets to her office, she realizes that the monitor had a message up demanding payment. The PDF invoice was actually ransomware, which means all of her photos, documents, and files on that computer and every other computer that she went to were encrypted. And payment would be needed in order to access those files again. I spoke to Susan, and she told me that she just got fooled and she felt stupid, but everything felt appropriate. And it's not odd for her to receive an invoice from Amazon. A little bit later after that, a friend of mine, John, was communicating with someone on Instagram. John is a religious person. And this person said that they needed prayer and spiritual support. And being that religious and supportive person that he is, he complied. And after about two weeks of direct and consistent communication with this person, he felt like he knew them enough and he felt compelled by their story enough that he sent them $2,000 to help them and their family through the hardship that they were having. After the money was received, the person disappeared. The Instagram account, gone. Not even a thank you. And it's not hard to recognize this is how to reach John. His Instagram is flooded with Bible verses, scripture, and positive motivation for his followers. He doesn't shy away from his beliefs. He puts them out there for the world to see. And so I asked John. He confided in me. He asked, what should he do? I told him he should probably change his, get a new bank card contact his bank, and inform all his church members about what happened so they do not fall victim as well. Nearly in tears, he told me that this is not fair. He told me about how they even exchanged pictures, and so he saw the family that he was helping out. He told me, when people need prayer, he prays. When people need spiritual support, he helps find them a way through. He was just doing what he feels like he was called to do. I told John about when I communicated with the cyber criminal impersonating my mom, and I agree with him. If the same thing was to happen tomorrow, I would likely feel the same way, because it's hard to turn that part of your brain off. Now, I'm one of the founding researchers for a new and emerging field called cyber psychology. Cyber psychology is a blend between cybersecurity, 
psychology and a little bit of neuroscience mixed into there. When you're online, your limbic or survival brain doesn't activate as it really does in this physical world right here. Your limbic brain is used to moderate feelings. It has no cognitive function for language. You do not speak using your limbic brain. So if you've ever been in a situation where something just doesn't feel right, that's your limbic brain letting you know that something's off, but it doesn't quite know how to say it. However, when you're online, your limbic system is also used for fight or flight. That's the most popular reason for your limbic system. So when you have the situations of fight or flight, it's actually not a choice. The limbic brain is innately going to make this decision for you based on the situation and the scenario that is going on at that moment in time. You won't have to think about it. You just act. When you're online, when you're behind your computer screen, and you're reading spam, you don't think, oh my god, it's the Nigerian prince, and you just duck underneath your desk, you're dodging from the monitor, and you're jumping from your chair. That doesn't happen. (laughs) You have to deductively reason your way through this entire scenario. Also, this limbic brain helps you ever since you were a kid. We were all told the same two words, stranger danger. And when you're online, that stranger danger feeling, those barriers come down. And you just see a name. And the default voice that you read in is your own. You do not read in some creepy man's voice imagining he's sitting in his basement with Cheeto dust all over his fingers. <laughs> Mountain Dew is just splayed out everywhere. The man even has a Kool-Aid mustache. You don't read in that voice. You read in your own voice, unless you see a name of a loved one. You see your husband's name. You see your wife's name. You see your kid's name. You begin to feel love. But then you start to read in their voice. This is dangerous. Because when you trust the messenger more than you trust the message, you're in trouble. So when I received that email from the criminal impersonating my mom, I read the entire thing in her voice. I heard her tell me about the hardship they were having. I heard her say that she hated to ask her son for money, but she had nowhere else to turn, and she just wanted to make it through the end of the month. I heard that. And as her son, that is difficult to get through. Cyber criminals have the upper hand, and this is not a fair fight. It's not reasonable to think that you're going to see a name of a loved one and feel nothing. These criminals have the unique ability to appear however they want, whenever they want, create this entire scenario, and you're going to interpret that scenario based on the settings that they put around it. It's estimated that by 2021, cybercrime is going to cost the world $7 trillion. This is not slowing down. It's only speeding up. 90% of all cyber attacks include some form of social engineering. 95% of all cyber attacks include phishing. Phishing is the most common attack by far, period. Because it's the easiest way that they can get the information that they want. I'm a sports fan, so I'm going to give you a sports analogy. If we're playing football and I'm the quarterback, I'm not going to hand the ball off to the running back and have them run directly into Von Miller, who's arguably one of the best defensive players in the league right now. We're actually going to hand the ball off, and we're going to go around, or we're going to hand the ball off, and we're going to go the other way of Von Miller, or we might just pass the ball. Because we can still get yards. We can still score touchdowns without attacking the best defender on their defense directly. Cybercriminals think the same exact thing. 
They don't want to go toe-for-toe with your firewall. They don't want to challenge your antivirus, because that's very difficult. Not when they can exploit the largest vulnerability on every network on the planet right now. That's us. People. Cyber criminals are not just hacking computers, they are hacking humans. Because we read, reason, and react. And unlike computers, we actually respond to propaganda. I'm not talking about trees, mountains, or desert. We're talking about computers, phones, and tablets. This is an environment that we created. We are not built for it. So I caution you. Understand your personality and what makes you tick. Be self-reflective before you react. Because what you love most, whether it be your family, your religion, or even those online shopping habits, all of that can be used against you. Stay safe. Thank you.